In the headlines, NAVDAC to subject Moderna vaccines to laboratory tests before use to ensure it is safe. Court grants Iboho's AIDS bail. Abductors again attack community in Niger State. And on the foreign scene, eight killed, 20 injured in car blast near Afghan Defense Minister's residence. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayubailia. Thank you for joining. Here's the news in details. National Agency for Food and Drug Administration, NAVDAC, says it is testing the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines to ascertain its quality before it can be administered on Nigerians. Director General of the agency, Mojishola Adeye, said this in Abuja during a media briefing. National Primary Healthcare Development Agency had on Monday inspected 4 million doses of the vaccines donated to Nigeria. Trust TV's Nafisa Abdul Al tells us more. I've been working around the clock uh, in terms of making sure that we do testing on the Moderna vaccines. The health of our people is premium uh, to us in NABDA. And uh, we, we, right now we are doing the testing. It's not something you go to the lab and in two hours you come out. No. As NABDAC flags off its sensitization campaign in its selected states, Chairman Senate Committee on Health Ibrahim Olorebe says the National Assembly partners with NAVDAC in order to ensure the safety and health of the nation. He also urged resident doctors to call off their strike as the country needs them now more than ever. I also want to join before I close my colleagues in calling our colleagues uh, the uh, resident doctors to please go back to work. As we often said, and we've said this severally, that a strike by any doctor for any one minute leads to loss of life. And any life lost can never be regained. Any issues you strike on, if it is about money and so on, you can see you pay arrears. There's no arrears for life. And our primary uh, responsibility as doctors, when we took the Hippocratic oath, is to ensure that human lives are saved. Chairman of the Healthcare Services, Honorable Yusuf Tanko Sununu, says Nigerians should be educated on the dangers of excess usage of drugs for the wrong reasons. The use of paracetamol, the fasting cooking of meats. Some will do it at the same time, others use it so that it can soften faster. Others also do it because they don't want to use so much gas or, uh, or firewood in cooking. Now, the consequences of reaction of such large doses of prostamol in the meat will convert it from its natural chemical structure to another. And that's orders that it will be converted. They likely have much impact on our labor. The sensitization program is geared at ensuring safety and healthy living standards in the country. Nefisa Abdel Al, Chess TV News, Abuja. Meanwhile, the National Youth Service Corps says no core member have been confirmed positive of COVID-19 in all the orientation camps across the country. In a reaction to reports suggesting that 109 core members have tested positive in various camps across the country, Director, Press and Public Relations, Adenike Adeyemi, however, said that those confirmed positive of the virus were prospective core members and have not been admitted into the camps. She explained that the NYSE, in collaboration with the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, conducts rapid diagnostic tests to all prospective core members reporting to the CAM to ensure only those who test negative are admitted. No core member tested positive to COVID-19 nationwide in the 37 camps of the NYSE. There are 36 states and the FCT. Prospective core members are mobilized for service. They come from all over the nation, but in view of the existence of COVID-19, there is a synergy and a collaboration between the NYSC and NCDC 
National Center for Disease Control. Because of that, we have NCDC team on every camp and at the, at the, at the gates before anyone is allowed in, not just the prospective core members. The prospective core members, members of staff, members of the collaborative agencies, visitors, even many marketers, anybody coming into the NYSC camp must undergo the COVID-19 test. Per adventure, anyone tests positive. That prospective core member is not allowed into the camp. The prospective core member is handed over to NCDC for further tests and treatment. Therefore, everyone that has access into the camp, everyone resident within the camp is in there having been confirmed negative. Now, a federal high court sitting in Abuja has granted bail to the 12 aides of Yoruba Nation agitator, Sunday Adeya, more popularly known as Sunday Iboho. The aides who were arrested during a raid or at Iboho's residence on July 1st instituted a suit against the Department of State Services, seeking the enforcement of their fundamental human rights. Trust TV's Aisha Salehu reports. At the resumed hearing of the detained aides of Yoruba Nation Agitator, the Department of State Services produced all 12 detainees for hearing in the matter before the Federal High Court Abuja after 34 days in detention. The presiding judge, Justice Obiara Eguatu, ruling on the case said no charge had been brought against Sunday Boho's aides since their arrest. Eight of the applicants were granted bail in the sum of 5 million naira each, with two shorties residing in Abuja while four other applicants were granted bail in the sum of 10 million naira each, with two shorties and like some, also resident in Abuja, with verifiable means of identification. Counsel to the applicants, Pelumi Olajengwesi, noted that justice had been served. Well, uh, it's not a problem. Well, justice is the same thing. Justice is equal. What's fundamental for us is that these people should be given justice. We are actually here because of their liberty, and the court has granted them their liberty. So it does not matter um, what, what are the terms of um, the bill. What's important is that they have been granted bill. I was very, very glad about it. He added that the variation in the bill categories was welcomed. No, no, we don't need to vary the, um, the grounds of bail because the grounds are quite uh, good and fantastic. What we are supposed to do is to quickly meet up with the required um, grounds so that we can quickly move on and these people can have their liberty quickly. One would most likely say justice has prevailed today at the Federal High Court of Abuja, where the presiding judge ruled that the detained aides of the Yoruba Nation agitator be granted bail. Although in different categories, the applicant's counsel is in high spirits and hopes that the bail conditions will be met soon enough. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now, three students of the Bethel Baptist Secondary School have been liberated. Proprietor of the school, Reverend Adamu Jangadu, confirmed the return of the three students whom he said are all boys. Police Public Relations Officer in the state, ASP Jaligi Muhammad, said that they are aware of the return of the students but have not received any official report from the school management. It will be recalled that the 121 students of the school were kidnapped on the 5th of July. This brings the number of returned students to 41 out of 121 that were kidnapped. About seven persons have been killed in an attack in Miangu Irigwe Chiefdom in Basa local government area of Plateau State by gunmen suspected to be herders. On Tuesday night, at least two people were killed while two trucks were also set on fire when hoodlums blocked the highway to Gadabu, just North local government area. Trust TV's correspondent, Dixon Adam Adama, who is presently in Jos, the Plateau State Capital, gives us an update of the situation. ...in two local government areas, which is Basa and Rion local government. 
and the, 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 the problem is the killings, the burning down of houses and the destruction of crops and uh, both parties between the suspected herdsmen as well as the natives have suffered great loss in this respect. And then there have been so many questions on why security is not handling these things from the villages or from the communities. And as I speak now, the, the government has spread into the town of just since yesterday. And there have been bodies in places like uh, Aguarukuba and the Gadadu and the uh, Polo areas. And all those things have been costing so many things and so many lives have gone in that respect. So the question in anyone, everyone's lips is that, why is this thing not being taken care of? However, the governor has come out to say that, to order the security agents to deal ruthlessly with all the people perpetrating this violence. But all these things have been on and on and on, and it has always been instruction and instruction, and there is a condemnation and condemnation. But the people are looking forward for a time when this thing will actually come to an end. But as we speak now, all what the people want is peace and restoration and unity and so that the plateau that we used to know and the people are always happy to live in will always come back to our cities. Still on security matters, gunmen have abducted children from a community in Niger State on Wednesday, abducting other residents. A witness said the victims were taken from three houses and a hotel within Ungwar Fulani area of Kwankwashi town. Daily Trust correspondent Adam Umar brings us up to speed with the state of affairs. Most of the residents we are in, I talk to, we are in the state of confusion because they are secure, they we are very secured, complaining that no any assistance from the security men until when it was late. The people that could assist them were vigilante. So, but unfortunately, they cannot confront the uh, government. So they decided to move toward the town exit and let ambush, thinking that the government will follow there on the way on their way out. But unfortunately, they changed their directions. Later on, when the police have arrived, they just stand by the far away, blowing the siren that gave the government. Uh, alert that the security have arrived, then they move away with the uh, victims. On political matters now, the crisis rocking People's Democratic Party depends as seven national officers resigned from the party. This is coming at a time a member, Board of Trustees, Senator Joy Emodi, joins the ruling All Progressives Congress uh, Party. The party chieftains, in different letters addressed to its national secretary, alleged being sidelined and unfairly treated by the national chairman, Uche Secondos. National youth leader of the party, Ude Okoye, blamed Secondos for the crisis. He managed PDP. He has made sure that many departments of the party did not function as effective as it ought to function. Mr. Chairman have nothing to offer to the party, only to come here and deceive us. There is a sharp division in our NWC right now. Not only me, many other NWC members are more aggrieved than myself. Today, I have asked him in our NWC meeting to resign his position as the national chairman because he cannot lead this party to victory. Number two, I am also asking the leaders, the governors, the founding fathers, the youth, the women, to rise up to rescue our party from the hand of incompetent leader like Secondus. You're watching Trust News Update and coming up after the break, Patients face difficulties in hospitals as doctor strike enters third day. Details and more coming shortly. My name is Samuel Dada. Yakubu Isa. And I'm Nakabi the Jeji. And you know Musa. I want to have a say, okay, then some are empty. I'm going to come home today. I'm looking for private jobs. Sometimes you get employed and the process of payment, you know, you undergo some kind of stress.
latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Nigerian story. Thanks for staying with us and you are still watching Trust News Update. Now let's have another look at some of our top stories. National Agency for Food and Drug Administration, NAVDAC, said it's testing the Moderna vaccine to ascertain its quality before it can be administered to Nigerians. Plus, a federal high court sitting in Abuja has granted bail to the 12 aides of Sunday Iboho. Moving on now, the strike embarked upon by the National Association of Resident Doctors is taking its toll on patients as hospitals affected by the strike run skeletal services. Trust TV's Dashan Husseina Usman reports on compliance with the strike and challenges faced by hospitals and patients. We're live at Wuse District Hospital right here in Abuja. A place that was once filled with patients trooping in and out is now a skeleton of itself. All efforts to reach the hospital board, all efforts to try and talk to patients has proved abortive as we've been transferred from one office to another. Unfortunately, the MD is said to be in the theater and cannot grant us access to speak to these patients and uh, any hospital staff, you know, on the ongoing strike and how it has affected the hospital and how it is affecting patients at the moment but you know subsequently we'll be back and we will try and get more information on the ongoing strike and its challenges on patients and hospitals it's the third day since the ongoing strike by the nigerian association of resident doctors began with no end in sight at least for now both the association and federal government are yet to reach an agreement. A distraught mother of a child suffering from cerebral palsy had this to say. If the doctor is not there for, for hospital, who will take care of our children? We don't want them to go for strike. Because if they go for strike, the thing will affect us. It will affect us. Thank God the doctor for the physiotherapy, they are around today. That is why they attend to my baby. If they are not around, if I come to the hospital, I will not be happy. So we don't want them to go for strike. Let government try and help the doctors too. Because they are trying and they need more a lot of doctors in the hospital. The issue of strike is one too many that one cannot be any longer. In school, the professors and whatever, they will tell you they are going to strike. A tiny little thing. Because of one political issue or the other. Same thing is coming to health. So we should come with a policy. If not because our, our government and every other thing, those in politics are corrupt, we should come with the ideal situation that health, education, water, anything that is concerning human feeling should not they should not go into strike. They should not go into all the, all the stuff should be, there should be no unionism. And if you know you cannot work they live. Because the same people who are here, who knows the importance of their, of their profession, are the one putting us into ransom. Chairman, House of Representatives Committee on Healthcare Services, Honorable Dr. Yusuf Tonko Sununu, while speaking at a NAFDAQ sensitization flag off held Wednesday in Abuja, urged resident doctors to resume work, assuring that their demands would be looked into. The doctors began the strike indefinitely on the 2nd of August after accusing the federal government of not keeping their promises in providing a comfortable work structure and environment for resident doctors. Dashan Husseina Usman, Trust TV News, Abuja. 
Now, the Joint Planning Board and National Council on Development Planning has begun its 20th edition meeting in Maiduguri. The theme of the event, Managing the Nigerian Economy for Sustainable Development in a Challenging Environment, aims to address the setbacks and repositioning the economy. The report. Participants and delegates from across the country were in Maiduguri for the 20th edition of the Joint Planning Board and National Council on Development Planning Summit. The three days gathering will be focusing and brainstorming on the negative impacts of the economy and overcoming the challenges posed by COVID-19, humanitarian crisis as well as addressing insecurity problems which has affected sustainable development in Nigeria. Goodwill messages from special guests describe the summit as timely and called on the state to intensify development in agriculture to address the looming food insecurity and nascent mineral resources. For now, most states of the generation cannot fully survive financially without the central education of the generation account. So it can become a little as a big imperative for the state and local government across the country to vigorously and independently pursue the idea of diversification of their local economies and also involve an effective and that oriented tax regime in order to ensure less dependence on salary education for the potential account. Unfortunately, humanitarian needs are increasing as funding is declining. Allow me to acknowledge the generous contributions of our donors and the government of Nigeria that has enabled us to deliver life-saving assistance and protection services for millions of people, including women, girls and children affected by the conflict in the North East. The three-day summit will focus paper presentation on tackling humanitarian challenges and COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria, challenges and opportunities. It is expected that the participants and key actors will compile a viable and durable solution as well as come up with the possible options that will facilitate sustainable development growth nationwide. Omosi has returned to Lugbe after a fierce clash broke out Tuesday evening between commercial motorcycle riders operating at the Federal Housing Junction and tricycle riders operating at police signboard area in the area of Abuja. The incident occurred when the motorcycle riders accused the tricycle riders of operating in their turf without approval. Trust TV's Dashen Hussein Usman again reports. Wait, so they don't allow me to carry, me to carry my car. They go. What happened now? Bike riders under the ages of Motorcycle Transport Union of Nigeria (Mutun) are at loggerheads with tricycle riders under Amalgamated Commercial Tricycle and Motorcycle Owners Repairs and Riders Association of Nigeria (Acomoran) over areas of operation. A Comoran branch chairman, Matthew Oyinaka Bako, speaks on the situation, saying no one has monopoly of territory. For some time now, we have been here operating as AKK drivers. And uh, the other side of the Federal Housing Junction, uh, whenever AKK people went there to carry passengers into the estates and the other villages around, the Okada people, you know, embarrass them, harass them, arrest them, collect some money from them, and all of that. We decided to report to police. Police held a meeting to discuss with them, between us and them, which they gave us assurance that there will be no issue. This uh, issue of KK and Okada, DPO have already called the meeting several times, both the Okada leaders and KK leaders, that since the Honorable Minister said all the whole KK should go to the centralized town to go and operate, and the leaders, they agree that KK will work, Okada will work. But sometimes, this junction, they started the same thing. 
until when we took the chairman to prison. That is when they come back to their senses. So the other junction, Federal Housing and Car Wash, the chairman there, they, they don't have to cooperate, they don't have to talk to their members. So each time Keke go there, they will attack Keke's. Mutun chairman could not be reached for comment. No one is reported to be hurt during the altercation and both parties have refused to sheath their sword even as police continue to mediate on the issue. Right now, I am standing at a garage in Lugbo Police Signboard where Okada riders and KK riders are allowed to work harmoniously. The KK Riders Association are calling on the FCT minister to look into the situation currently happening in Lugbo to enable them extend their reach. Dashen Husseina Usman, Trust TV News, Abuja. And now on the foreign scene, the Interior Ministry on Wednesday says at least eight people died in an attack targeting the Kabul home of Afghanistan's acting defense minister. Five gunmen entered residential buildings and engaged in a gun battle with the Afghan Special Forces. Interior Ministry spokesperson Mirwais Stan Stanze said that the attack ended about five hours later after members of the security forces killed all the attackers. Hours after the attack, the acting defense minister, Bismillah Mohammadi, posted a video on social media saying that his home was targeted by terrorists but that he is safe with his family. This now brings us to the end of Trust News Update, but you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all social media handles for more updates. I am Ayubailia. Thank you for watching.